Now, what is up my fellow product coders? Welcome to this video. And today we will implement a session-based authentication system with the Node.js Express.js framework and with Redis. Now, before we get started, uh, please make sure that you have Redis running on your local machine. So you can do so by going to redis.io slash download and by just uh, downloading the installer of your operating system. As an alternative, you can also use the Docker image if you don't want to download the installer. Or if you're on Mac, uh, you can also use Homebrew. So you can run brew install Redis. So I'm not going to do that because I already did. And then you can say brew services uh, start Redis. Actually, I think it's already running. Services ls. Okay, so you see it's already running. And by the way, you can stop it with uh, brew services stop Redis. Okay, this is how you stop a service with Homebrew. So it's a pretty nice and convenient tool if you're on Mac, so you can manage everything. So let's start it again. Redis, now it should be running. And I think we are good to go. So navigate to the directory of your choice where you want to create the project and then let's just run npm init dash yes. So now we have a package.json file. This is pretty nice. Let's just open this up in our code editor. Okay, that looks quite okay. No dependency so far. And we're going to change that right now because we want to use Express. <laughs> we of course need to install Express.js, right? And we also want um, the Express Express.js session uh, package. So this package here uh, will help us to manage uh, our session middleware. So it's super easy. We just have to install it and then we can pass some configuration options and that's pretty much it. And this one um, is super flexible because basically you can use whatever store you want. So if you scroll down, you see a list of compatible uh, other projects. You can use Aerospike, you can use Cassandra and all these stores in here. Now I'm just going to use Redis because uh, I just like it. But you can basically use whatever you want. Okay, so we're going to need this package, uh, Express.js session, and we're also going to need um, this um, connector, like this adapter, and this one is called Connect Redis. So let's just install all of that at once. Let's say npm install Express, then Express, express uh, session, and then we need um, Connect Redis. And one important thing is, um, this package here, it has another dependency to the Redis uh, package. So we also need to install that. And we already have Express, Express uh, Session installed. So let's add Redis as well. And another thing which is sort of um, optional, I always like to install Nodemon. This is not really required to make it run, but it's just uh, for a smoother development experience. And installing all these packages might take quite a while but actually we can already start with implementing all these changes i would say so let's open our editor and you see our package.json uh, just got updated this is pretty nice and one thing we should do is we'll add here another script here and we will say uh, nodemon index.js so this is going to enable a hot reload. So every time we change something in our uh, file, um, then we're going to restart the server because otherwise we have to do that manually and this is just super, super annoying. Nice. Um, so what else can we do? Ah, you know what? Actually, I just noticed uh, this one should be saved as uh, a dev dependency. So we should say npm install nodemon uh, save dev, right? Because we only need this for development. Okay, anyway, uh, let's create a new file and let's call it uh, index.js. And inside this index.js file, uh, we are going to import a couple of things. So first of all, we are going to import express. 
And by the way, I'm going to write the entire logic for this session uh, storage in one file. So guys, I don't want to see this in production, right? I am just writing it in one file so you can see step by step what steps you need to perform. But I mean, you know that, right? You know that you shouldn't write stuff in one file. Okay, so the next thing we will need to import is we're going to import this um, express session package. And then we're going to import Redis. So basically we're now importing everything that we uh, installed previously. And we also import connect Redis equals require connect Redis. Okay, so the very first thing we need to do is we need to create an application, right? Const app equals express. Cool. Now we have an express app. And um, now the thing is, we somehow need to configure where we want to store our sessions. And for that, we need to create a Redis store. So say const Redis store. And we will just say connect Redis session. So what this does is it's going to wire up our connect Redis uh, package with our session uh, package. So that means uh, our session package will handle the overall or will do the overall session management and connect Redis will take care of like flushing stuff to um, our in-memory Redis store. Um, so if you use a different storage, like something like Aerospike or something, then you need to import or then you need to exchange this one here, connect Redis with the connect Aerospike package, for example, right? Um, and now what we need to do is the first step, basically, uh, we need to configure our Redis because our Redis is running on a specific port and um, it's also running on a specific host and we need to tell our server where it runs. So we are just going to say const redis client equals redis.create client. And this is super easy because we just need to pass a couple of configuration options. So we are going to say it's running on port 6379. And by the way, this is not some magic number that I came up with, but this is actually the default port of Redis. Again, if you use a different um, session storage, then you might run on a different port. And our host is localhost. Okay, so what this does is it says, hey, I want to create a new Redis client and please connect to localhost on port 6379. Okay, that's pretty cool. And the next thing we need to do is we need, actually need to plug some session middleware into our server. And to plug some in order or in order to plug something into our server, we use app.use. So any request that comes in is going to flow through through the middleware that we are now about to create. And this middleware is just some configuration for the session. So we are going to call session and this session function uh, gets a configuration object. And in here, we need to specify in what kind of store um, we want to save our session. And we also need to specify what kind of client we want, right? And again, if you use a different client, then you know pick a different package over here and also pick a different client. Nice. And um, what else? Well we are the or like the sessions they are generated with a specific secret and you should <laughs> keep that secret secret so don't tell it anyone so for now we are just going to say my secret of course if you run this somewhere please change it to some something cryptic you know someone that you can't guess and then in addition to that we have a couple of configuration options um, so for example we can say uh, save uninitialized uh, false. So what this means is uh, if you make a request to the server and um, like you're not storing anything in the session well or like you're not adding anything to the session object then we're not going to write it to the database because the 
session would be empty anyway. And apart from that, we can have some cookie settings. So remember, uh, in the previous video, I told you that we are sending back a cookie. And um, these settings here control how the cookie is sent back. And guys, this setting here is like super, super important. So don't miss it. It is really, really important that you get this right because otherwise your application will be insecure. So there's a flag, it's called secure. And secure means only send the cookie back if um, the incoming request is an HTTPS request. So if the connection is encrypted. Now, since we are running on local host, I'm going to set this to false. But of course, if you run this in production, uh, always, always set this to true. So if this is true, then only transmit cookie over HTTPS. And by the way, you can run into a, into a lot of problems here um, with some proxies and, and these kind of things. But I'm going over this in, uh, in an, later on, I guess. And then we can say HTTP only. What this means is that um, if true, um, then like it prevents uh, client-side JavaScript from uh, reading the cookie. You should always have that because your people, you know, the people that are going to use your app, they're going to do some crazy things. They're going to hang around at some crazy sites. And um, yeah, they are <laughs> not going to do things properly. Okay. And the next thing is we can set the maximum age of the cookie. So this is the maximum age of the cookie of uh, in milliseconds. So let's just say we want uh, 30 minutes. Okay. So 1000 milliseconds, um, 60 seconds per minute and 30 uh, minutes. So session max age in milliseconds. Okay, nice. And since this video is already quite long, I would say let's just um, cut the video here. We are going to continue in the next video and hopefully we can finish off this tutorial then. So thank you very much for watching. Um, please leave a comment or please let me know what you think about this. And um, please make sure to give the video a thumbs up. And also please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so.